Good morning. I'd like to introduce you to the Arizona All Cup and One Cup Maker. And the Arizona All Cup and One Cup Maker makes uh, coffee style convenient cups that allow you to have a quick cup on the go in the morning or from your office or wherever you might be. It offers uh, this style cup which is used in most of one or single serving cup makers. The all cup adds the feature of being able to use this style cup which is uh, known for as an espresso. So if we accidentally mention the word or letter N or uh, K in the same sentence as the word cup, please note that these are trademarks of both uh, Keurig and uh, Nespresso. A lot of people have wanted to make these uh, with their fresh roasted coffee and serve it for the first time ever uh, with coffee that's one to three weeks old, giving people uh, the taste of actual fresh coffee versus uh, pre-packaged coffee sold in the stores that may be months old. But they've wanted to label it themselves, so we want to show you today uh, what one of our customers uh, sent in to us, because if you have these lids made um, pre-printed, they have to be pre-printed by 200,000. We'll give you a lead to where you can have that done, but for most people they want to be able to print as they need a thousand with either their logo or maybe the type of coffee like Colombia, Costa Rica or whatever. There's a company called uh, well, Rubberstamps.net, we're going to give you a link to that, that sells a permanent ink stamp, alcohol based stamp that once dry will not, nothing can take it off liquid or nothing can take it off and it won't interfere with the operation of these uh, brewer machines. So what you can do simply is set this up on a uh, tray that's uh, stainless steel and just stamp. And you'll see uh, some will stamp perfect, some not so perfect, but it depends on how you as the stamper does. But uh, it uh, allows you to stamp an entire uh, batch of a hundred, a thousand, or whatever, either with your own coffee brand or in this case with the logo. As you can see right here, I'm using the logo AZ1 cup. So a note on this particular type that works with some of the machines that have the infrared reader, try to keep your label inside the white part of the label itself. So you stamp those up and uh, you're ready to go to the next step. We're going to show you how easy it is to uh, make these single serving cups and offer them to your customers with fresh roasted coffee. I wanted to show you that this can be done, the labeling also on the N-type labels, uh, uh, trademark for Nespresso. And uh, we use a three-quarter inch one from the same company, a permanent stamp, uh, rubberstamps.net. These are about $26 plus shipping, whereas the one and three-fourths inch size, which goes on the bigger cup, is about $45, $50. And this works great. Simple little uh, press down. And this one's, of course, just pre uh, showing our uh, company name and a little coffee cup. And it works great on the uh, Nespresso type. Keep in mind, it takes a little longer for the alcohol based ink to dry on uh, foil. Also, if you, uh, most of these lids, at least the ones we sell for Nespresso or the N type cup trademark, is. Uh, foil, which still looks nice, but if you want one with a white uh, surface, uh, that's fine too. You just need to order those. Uh, we don't carry them. Uh, one word on the uh, silver or the uh, foil type. The side that gets stamped is the shiny side. The matted looking side is the part that seals onto the cup. Another word I want to mention is when you're sealing with the sealing machine, the K style and uh, all cup style um, gets 170 Celsius, whereas uh, because of the type of cup used in this, the type of plastic, you need 180 degrees Celsius. 
to seal that. So you let those dry and then you're uh, ready to fill your uh, cups and start sealing. We're going to show you uh, some easy ways to fill your cups. Before we uh, talk about uh, putting uh, the or filling the cups, I wanted you to see the uh, basic uh, grind of the coffee. Of course, you want to use a burr grinder. We use the Swiss Didding trademark, uh, one of the best grinders on the market. Uh, but you don't need one that good. You can get by with a small one. But you want it ground somewhere in between uh, drip coffee and not as fine as espresso. I don't know if you can see that. On the Didding, it's uh, number five, whereas number four is for steam espresso and number uh, three for pump espresso. But a pretty fine grind. This grind allows us in a traditional cup to uh, make 10 and sometimes even 12 ounce cups that taste very rich and smooth depending on the machine you use, or the brewing machine. But that gives you an idea of the uh, grind. We now want to talk about uh, filling your cups, the method to fill your cup. This is one common machine on the market uh, that does uh, between my, maybe one gram and I think up to a hundred grams. Uh, it's a fairly inexpensive machine. You can find them on eBay for about three, four hundred dollars. You fill the hopper and then you uh, turn the machine on and, and set it up. We're going to show you the three methods we've tried and show you which one worked because out of the three only one was very productive and surprisingly it was the cheapest method, not this method. Most of the normal serving size cups that make up to the 8, 10 and even 12 ounce uh, brewed coffee hold between about eight and a half and eleven grams of coffee. We're going to show you why this one didn't work. It measures the uh, amount, which in this case is nine grams. As you see, nine grams overflows the cup. And uh, that's partially because the cup, when it goes through the system, gets a lot of air in it and it uh, expands and so if you tap it down after you put nine grams in less what fell on the floor you actually don't get a full cup so we really don't recommend a filling machine for your uh, single serving cup whether it be the small end style cups from espresso trademark or uh, for all the other uh, single serving cup makers Here's another reason why we don't uh, recommend uh, the uh, filling machine. Since it overflows the machine, either you have to keep a container below it or uh, sweep up your floor. In our attempt to develop a fast method for filling up the single serving cups, we uh, contracted with China to make these really heavy duty stainless steel cup trays that hold 25 cups quickly filled uh, with the K, uh, K style or a regular full size cup. And uh, I, I want to show you something before we go further. These uh, regular style single serving cups come with two available types of filters a non woven filter and what's called a paper filter. The paper filter is a more expensive filter, but we found Personally, I can't tell the difference in taste, but we found that these are easier to uh, put in and just pop right into place, whereas those are a little more difficult. And so, uh, and these are, the paper ones are a little more environmental friendly. So this was a method we came up with, and we highly recommend you get a uh, bean scale scoop. You can get these at Amazon.com. Surprisingly, they are patented and they're, they're surprisingly expensive considering they're just a molded piece of plastic, about $35, but they're awesome for filling bags and filling uh, the single serving cups. So I highly recommend you get one of these. You simply pour your coffee into that. And in the case of filling the single serving cups, we just pour this or into the cup, whatever's not used 
is on a, a stainless steel 304 grade quality uh, product that can even be recycled. And then we just uh, use a knife or you can use uh, any type of tool to smooth that out. So quickly you've got 25 cups. Uh, we also found by putting this up two inches, you can easily go in and pop them out uh, once you get them filled and leveled out. And so you level this out to where uh, it's full. And then whatever is not used uh, in this can be uh, scooped off or scraped off and reused. As you can see, this is the second method I told you, and I mentioned we have three methods. We felt that this method was not as good as the method we're about ready to show you. One reason is it takes a little longer time filling and emptying these. Um, and also the cost of these uh, trays are about $125 before shipping, and they weigh about 11 pounds. So we don't recommend this method. I'm going to show you the method we recommend. The method I'm going to show you right now was uh, developed by a chef uh, roasting his own product at Get A Z Roasted. If you want to check out his website, Chad, and give him a shout. Uh, but it's a simple method that uh, only a chef would think of, and we were thinking too complicated here. The simple commercial style baking trays, and for the price of a dozen of these, and even the rack, you can get cheaper than the filling machine and not too much more than this one little tray here. So you could have a person filling the, the cups, sliding them in the rack, and then a person pulling them out of the rack and uh, uh, sealing them. Uh, I wanted to mention also, and you're going to hear this name much more frequently, the best place that you can find to get these uh, single-serving full cup uh, with filter and lid is uh, bags and pouches and uh, we're going to put that website up there for you to uh, see and they're also the best company to get for the bags if you want to fill these in bags of 12 or 24. Again the simple method is fill the uh, um, scoop with a pound or so of coffee and just distribute it knowing that any of the excess falls on that clean uh, stainless steel tray and uh, can be recycled. And then you'll need a little a device uh, to uh, level it out. We found you don't need to pack these down if you fill them up pretty close to the rim. It's going to be a sufficient amount of coffee with this particular uh, grind that we have to easily do a 10 ounce cup uh, that will be full and rich flavored and not taste watery. Of course for those who want uh, strong coffee they can either set their coffee maker at strong or just make a smaller cup and we'll get into that in just a little bit. After your trays have been filled and basically leveled out, you'll want to uh, begin sealing. You'll want to, uh, of course, gear up for that wearing the uh, sanitary gloves, disposable gloves, and hairnet, or whatever your city or area requires. I personally do not like these types of gloves. I would highly recommend the rubber gloves without the powder that are used in the medical field just because you can get a much better grip on uh, your uh, equipment. So when you're uh, going to uh, fill your machine, your sealing machine, if you haven't had somebody already level up the cup, uh, you'll want to level it off so that there's very little or none on the lip of the lid, which is where it seals at. And you simply fill up uh, the maker on the standard size cups with four. You take your uh, lids, make sure you put the label the right way up. Of course that's simple if you've got the uh, 
ones with a uh, design, logo, or name on it. Put them in between the three little posts so that they uh, will seal properly. And one thing I also want to mention, uh, mainly because we've had a couple customers uh, have a problem, is make sure your timer is set to two seconds or slightly under. Some are in the shipping process, these are getting turned, you simply turn it with your hand uh, and, they're ha and they're sealing them for longer than two seconds or less than two seconds. And if it's less than two seconds, it won't seal properly. If it's longer, it's going to cause the cup to melt and possibly even some of the plastic to melt onto the uh, heating surface. Real simple process, you pop that in, you pop it down, you hold it for the two seconds, the light goes off and pull it out. You can pop these out from underneath. Yes, the lids will be hot. They just uh, were at 370 degrees Celsius. And, but as you can see, they're very well solid uh, sealed to it. And then continue your process of sealing the cup. In a few moments, we'll show you how you can uh, label beyond what we showed you earlier, as well as a bag or box. But I did want to mention one other thing. In the all cup kit that you get, you get a uh, Nespresso, the small espresso type uh, cups, with a thousand of the cups and lids with this plate. This is about a five hundred dollar uh, plate in of itself. If it were to be uh, designed and built in the United States, our normal price is two hundred and fifty dollars with the kit. You'll find it's a, a, an incredible package, a thousand of the end style cups, a thousand of the regular style cups, both the four cup ceiling plate and the six cup. And this just, all you do is you loosen these bolts, pull them out, and then uh, insert that in, and then tighten the bolts down in from the back, and you're ready to do the espresso style cups. And we'll show you a little bit about that in a couple of minutes. I did want to show you something about the uh, standard foil size uh, lids, and this is whether you're using the full cup or the espresso style cup. One side, if, you're, if you get one that's not printed and it's just foil, one side is very glossy and one of them is matte. The matte always goes down on the cup. That's where the sealing uh, with the cup comes into place. And I'm going to make a couple of these because I'm going to show you how there are certain brewers that do not work with the foil size cups, but then we're going to show you a brewer that works with every style cup, no matter what you use. So whatever you're using on the market, we're going to highly, of course, recommend that uh, brewer, but we're going to make available to all ones that work for all cups. I did just want to show you one thing before we go on to talk about the espresso part is if you don't get these uh, labels in between the prongs you'll end up with something like this which is a ruined cup. Uh, even with this it wasn't completely in with the, with the three prongs and so therefore it uh, melted part of the cup on the top which will possibly melt onto the heating tray which if you do that you'll need to take a uh, paper towel and wipe that off. So be careful when you get in the production mode, you don't get so fast that you get careless with how you put your lids on. We now want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, espresso single serving cup uh, uh, makers and how you could fill for that. These cups come with their own built-in filter Keep in mind that espresso is an art in of itself and uh, you may want to do a little research if you're not familiar with it on the types of coffee that taste best as espresso, the blends, there's much to be learned about the blends. Uh, these hold about 5 grams of coffee, so you can get 90 to 100 per pound, so a really profitable um, market considering these uh, cost uh, less than 15 cents with the lid and so they sell for in the range of 60 to 90 cents a piece and so there's actually with the opening of this market in America and a lot of uh, famous actors advertising the product 
we expect uh, this espresso single cup market to really grow. So use an espresso type grind. We're using the kind that's uh, more with the steam grinder. In my Swiss grinder it's a number four. It's not the same as a pump which would uh, uh, mix which would be three. And again you're simply just either filling it from the scoop or you may find it more practical to fill with a spoon or a small uh, instrument. Uh, some people tamp it down a little bit. Uh, you can try different methods and see what works best for you. We encourage you to experiment a little bit with this as you develop it to make sure you get the best blends of coffee, the best grind, and the best uh, fill. To change out your um, AZ Allmaker to use the espresso style six cup in the four cup manual. You simply use a, a pair of pliers and a hexagonal wrench, pliers to hold the bottom, a hexagonal wrench to loosen the seal. Once you loosen the seal, these screw off really easy. That's how you take the four cup standard um, style serving cup tray out and uh, just make sure you don't lose the washer and the uh, nut set it aside, get both of them out, then it slides right in. Once you have your uh, espresso style plate installed, you'll want to plug your machine back in, turn it on, and one thing you'll need to do with using the uh, end style Nespresso cups is turn up the temperature from 170 Celsius to 180. So hit set and then uh, press the arrow up and that will allow you to go to 180. So then wait for it to heat up and you're ready to go. Our machine is preheated up to 180 Celsius. Put the shelf in, put it down for the two seconds. The timer will indicate that it's sealed. You might notice I did not have that cup in very well. Uh, but surprisingly it's sealed well anyway. So there you go. You can check the first couple. If it seems like they're not sealing properly, uh, then uh, you might uh, need to make a slight modification on the timer. But you shouldn't need to make a modification on the temperature. Keep in mind that uh, when these seal, there still may be a little lip in between the seal. Because if you look at these cups, the place that it seals is more on the inside of the cup. So don't let that bother you. And you should be able to soon be enjoying an espresso style coffee. One of the next questions people often ask is how to package the single serving cups. And if you've been using the stamp and you have the brand on the stamp, that's fine. If you've done like I've done and just put your logo, you may want to put a label on the side that indicates the uh, coffee that was used. In this case, I'm going to probably mispronounce this, so forgive me, uh, Flores Routing, which is an Indonesian coffee is what we've made in here. So I get these little labels from onlinelabels.com. Uh, you can get like 4,800 of them for about 38 or 39 dollars. Print them on a laser printer and uh, they're awesome for uh, on the uh, side of the cup. But you don't even need to do that. A lot of people are simply using their bag, a one pound bag or a two pound bag we get ours the best quality we've ever seen, the best price, and the nicest people. Uh, Bill is the sales rep I go to at uh, Bags and Pouches LLC. And I'll, we'll give you a link to that as well. A one pound bag here. Their one pound bag is bigger than most one pound bags I've seen elsewhere. You can get at least 12 K cups in it. The two pound bag will hold 24. And you can just simply use again from uh, the website onlinelabels.com and I believe you can also have custom labels made at Bags and Pouches 
but we uh, print ours directly from our laser printer, very inexpensive, a uh, Xerox 6500 phaser, and we don't use the Xerox ink, which costs about $400. We get our ink from Amazon for about $50 to $60, and it works awesome. That's the very ink you're seeing on these. And we will put the label on the bag, and the label would specifically say single serving uh, coffee cups or uh, espresso single serving coffee cups. And then, of course, we always label ours with the date that the coffee was roasted. This is vital in the micro roasting coffee industry. You can use these smaller labels, oops, which I just dropped, or this larger one. The smaller one, you can get a lot more uh, per dollar. And just hand write in, which gives that special uh, micro fresh roast touch. I was born on whatever the day's date is, and then pop that right on the back of your your bag. Whether you we do all this, whether we're selling fresh roasted beans or uh, the cups, the single serving cups. Remember, the A Z stands from every cup from A to Z. And that's what our machine's capable of doing. And so almost all brewers, which we're going to look at in a moment, will use these various servings, whether it be for the espresso or it be for a single serving cup from 6 to 12 ounces. One thing else I wanted to mention is some people insist on selling their cups in a box. For about 40 cents, you can get one of these shipping boxes. It's, uh, you can put a nice label on the outside, and it will hold 24 of the single serving cups. Uh, you could probably get 80 or more of the uh, espresso style. I haven't counted yet how many you can get in there. You can get fancier boxes, it's up to you, or you can just put a fancier label on it. We found that most people, once they get their box, they discard it, put the cups in their cup holders whether it be the espresso type or the single serving type, and go from there. We turn our attention to the test kitchen where we're about ready to test some of our uh, AZ1 and all cups. This is the single serving size that will, depending on your grind, will do between 6 and 12 ounce cups of coffee. I wanted to particularly note the uh, uh, iCoffee Maker. It's one of our favorite uh, machines. It's an inexpensive, high-quality machine. I meant to turn it on so it would preheat. But it will uh, do any cup, whether you have it specially marked or, uh, or not. Not all of them do that. Another really cool feature about this machine, other than its colors, is you got a on, right on the panel control panel where you select anywhere from 6 to 12 ounce uh, cups uh, and also when it injects its injector it doesn't just spray the hot 200 degree or 195 or whatever it might be temperature water it actually spins around injecting the water into the entire cup and many tests have shown that it makes a better cup than a lot of the uh, well-known manufacturers. Uh, so we're going to let that one warm up. On this particular one, which is a well-known uh, maker, I've covered up the label because I guess they don't want their name mentioned. Uh, this particular one is the 2.0 model. I'm going to show you with a simple uh, foil cup, it will tell you that you can't use that. And so you need to use a cup that their infrared beam picks up the signal and uh, that's where our AZ1 cups, which we try to make and cannot guarantee that they'll be used for every machine, but generally speaking, they will work on any machine. Let's give that a try. In this case, it's ready to be used. I want to make my coffee strong, and I like that feature about this maker, and then I want to make it uh, 10 ounces. Now I press my go button and let it brew. And in a minute here we'll show you how the iCoffee machine can be used with any type of pre-packaged coffee. Uh, and it even comes with this nice little one where you can use it with your own uh, coffee 
just got to follow the instructions and not overfill it or tamp it down and use a good grind coffee. Focusing a little more on the iCoffee machine, which is my preferred machine, we're going to take that same cup that couldn't be used in the competitor and see how well it fares in this. So I just close it down. It's telling me it's ready. I like to make a 10 ounce cup. So I press the button here to brew and in just a moment it'll produce a nice cup of coffee. Both uh, machines have produced 10 ounce coffees. I'm testing them both. I'm not going to do a comparison test because it's not fair since I'm not blindfolded. But they both taste good at 10 ounces. I've never tried to fill one of these cups up and go as high as 12 ounces. But for somebody who doesn't like strong coffee, uh, I don't think would be any problem going two more ounces with this. People that like strong coffee like myself would want to limit it to 10. They both make excellent cups of coffee with fresh coffee, micro-roasted, uh, produced in the AZ All Cup maker. Okay, this is one of our little uh, N brand uh, Nespresso. I think it's one of their cheapest models, but it's a wonderful little machine. Uh, you open the lid up after you've turned it on and filled it. It has a little uh, dispensing slot that the used cups drop into and you empty after a period of time. You simply drop the cup in. You can't hardly put it in the wrong way because it shows you with the uh, shape of the cup. You push this down. Uh, you push the little button to make your desired amount of coffee. And since this is espresso style, you can see it's coming out nicely frothed. You want it in a small cup doing about an ounce. And so when you get to that point, you just hit the, turn the button off, and it'll stop. There we go. So, uh, nice looking espresso style and of course the flavor is going to be fresh but it's also going to depend on uh, your roast that's where it's important to uh, make uh, blends that really taste good I actually went with a single origin Papua New Guinea here that surprisingly as a single origin by itself has produced a wonderful drink and as you can see, these little jobbies are becoming more and more popular, espresso style. Uh, I believe their machines make anywhere from the one ounce espresso up to like a six ounce cup. But you can go online with this company and find out more about it because they're becoming increasingly popular and they're a really great company. And a very simple cup to produce. The point of this whole project is to introduce your clients to micro-fresh roasted coffee that's being roasted and put in their cup within days after being roasted, rather than having to buy store-bought uh, manufactured cups that could have been produced weeks to months prior to getting in your home or your customer's home. So we encourage you to look into this, invest in it. Many uh, of our uh, customers are saying it's increasing their business by 20 to 25 percent in coffee sales alone and it's getting their product and their name out in the market and more than just bagged coffee so we wish you the best we thank you for taking time to view this video with us and if you have any questions feel free to email randy at buckeyecoffee.com mm -hmm.